This is Undaunted Life, a man's podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Thompson. Let's get into it. Mark Wayne Mullen, it's always good to see you, but I got to tell you, this is probably the first time you've come on my show where there was, I guess, technically breaking news happening and where you have gone viral, like literally in the last hour, hour and a half. So for those of you that don't really know what's going on, I'll give you the brief version and then you can jump in. You and a guy named Sean O'Brien, he's a Teamster president. Y'all got into it at a Senate hearing. I think it was last year or something like that. Yeah, over the summer. Yeah. yeah, he was real, real boisterous and real, you know, uh, chest poundy and all that kind of stuff. But then he goes to Twitter and he like tweets at you a bunch of times and he tweets like some physical threats at you. And you're basically like, I'm your Huckleberry. And you challenge him to like a charity MMA fight, which sounds like a reasonable thing to do given the circumstances. He got real quiet. Well, this morning, Mark Wayne, so this is the morning of Tuesday the 14th. This will be coming out, you know, the next day. This morning, you'll have another Senate hearing. And basically, yeah. you you give that rundown, and then you say, you know, anytime, any place. And he responds, okay, that's fine, perfect. And you ask him a very, you know, decent, timely question. Well, what about we do it now? You want to do it now? And he says, I would love to do it right now. And then you say, well, stand your butt up then. And then you get up and you start taking off your wedding ring and like you're getting ready to throw down. And so everybody's shocked. Bernie Sanders is losing his top knot. It's kind of like freaking out. Now it's gone all over the Internet. So is there a backstory here or kind of kind of what went down? Because you know that this is this is craziness in terms of the news cycle. Well, of course it is. Well, listen, the guy's a thug. And if you, his name's Sean O'Brien. He's a, he's a Teamster boss. He took over after uh, Hoffa stepped down as president. And the guy, first thing he said after he became president in 2022 was he's going to bring back the mob mentality uh, to the Teamsters. Hmm. Uh, the guy has been in trouble over and over again, running his mouth. He's been suspended from his own union because he threatened his own members before. Uh, he has, he, he, he's been involved in criminal activity. He's never been charged, but he's been right there on the verge of it, right? Yeah. Uh, he was removed from, from, uh, from negotiations back in 2017 by then President Hoffa. Uh, for threats and and uh, and bad conduct from negotiations with UPS, and so now he comes in. He tweeted at me five times, Kyle, and I never said a word to him. He just was poking, poking, poking. I just leave him alone. It's not worth it. But when he said um, he, he he called me a clown and all this stuff, which is fine. You can call me whatever. I don't care. But when you go and you say anytime, anywhere, uh, you know where to find me, cowboy. I'm like, <laughs> okay. Um, well, then let's go. And, uh, and of course, you know, the reporters caught me and said, is this really uh, in, incumbent of a, of a United States senator? And I says, I'm a guy from Oklahoma first. You don't round your, round your mouth like that in Oklahoma unless you're going to be called out by it. And, and it's just that simple. I, I mean, I, listen, I know I'm 46 years old. I'm retired from fighting. I haven't gotten a street fight and I don't know when, which is why I was like, let's do this thing for charity. Um, yeah. And of course, the whole time, the, the song Toby Keith. Uh, I ain't as good as I once was, but I was good once as I ever was. <laughs> I was running through my head, and I was like, I'm, "This is this is this may hurt me, but there's no way in God's name I'm going to lose to him." <laughs> well, so okay, so I do want to actually follow up on that because obviously there are people that just don't like you because you're a red tie guy and you represent the Republican Party or you're from Oklahoma. There's going to be those people out there, so yeah. they will make the point that I'm at least sensitive to, like. Is there not something better for our senators to be doing than sure. to getting into these little tiffs? So how, how would you respond to that? Because you know that question's coming. Well, go back to the 1800s and 1700s. They used to have canings. And the duels. Senate. And they used to have uh, duels. And duels. <laughs> yeah. Right. And there was a way that men used to settle their differences. <clears throat> Sometimes they're just differences. And just like you used to, you used to be able to fight on the playground and just get swats. Mm. Now they call the police in and you get suspended from school automatically, even if you wasn't the one that started it. Used to, the only person that got in trouble was the person that started it. Uh, we've taken we've taken so much of this out of it, and at the same time, we're still guys. And sometimes, and sometimes, you need to be called on your actions. Um, and I get it. We do got other things to do. I understand that. I'm not some of this, you know, twenty year old guy that's still trying to get out there and act tough. I'm not. I get that. I got six kids, you know. Um, but I'm still, as I said, a guy from Oklahoma, and you can't do that. What What else was my response to be? Ignore it. I'm sorry, but is that my my response? To, 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 I ignored him four times be prior to that, and people say, "Yes, you're supposed to ignore it." Well, you know, I'm a, I, I'm I'm not a very good Christian. I try to be a good Christian, and I know people say you're supposed to turn the other cheek. I prefer the David method. 
Um, uh, and, and, and I won't start it, but I'll sure do everything I can to finish it. Maybe I'll lose, who knows, but I guarantee you, um, I, I'll know you, you'll know you've been in a fight. Well, Mark Wayne, I do have to ask this as well, because I, I don't know about you, but I've watched a lot of movies and I've watched a lot of television and supposedly teamster type guys, these mob mentality guys, they do have this way of getting, you know, concrete boots on people and then tossing sure. them in the river. And so, I mean, if no one's concerned well, about the one-on-one -on -one here, but, but Mark Wayne, I mean, these guys are kind of shady and they're, they're saying they want to be shady. So are you worried? Are you, are you concerned at all? Man, we got the Ader County Mafia going on too. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Cherokee County, man. Ader uh, County. Yeah. Yeah. Ader County. No, um, you know, I, you know, I guess you got to be you got to be smart by it. Uh, but this isn't personal to the Teamsters. This is personal to Brian. And I think most of those guys will say, I, I didn't start this. I didn't put the tweet out. I didn't do any of this thing. Most of these guys, these Teamsters, they're also, I'd consider tough guys too. They're no nonsense. They know that their boss went out of line. And, uh, but I will say the last time this happened, my death threats went through the roof. We expect that to happen this time too. Mm. Uh, last time they wanted to put security on me. This time, I don't know if they will or not. I, I, I turned it down last time. I'll turn it down, I'm sure, this time too, unless something's real credible. But that doesn't give them excuse, and that doesn't mean that I'm going to back down from it either. Um, I, I get there's risk on everything you do, but I sure don't live in fear. Well, I would also like to go on record that if y'all do end up getting this fight signed, if you do end up going into the cage, you, you know, you dust off the gloves and all those things like that, I would like to announce that fight. And I'm not going <laughs> to be super unbiased. I'll be really honest from the beginning. But I think I'm probably the most qualified to get in there. Can we at yeah. least agree that yeah. we can at least negotiate <clears throat> for that? No, you'd have to be biased. You'd better be my friend if you're announcing it. Oh, it'll 100%. be it'll be preposterous. It'll be preposterous. <laughs> yeah, so no, we need to go. You know, I, it, it's not going to happen. At the end of it, I was like, because he was trying to back out of it and saying, you know, that isn't what I met. And I was like, well, what'd you mean? He's like, well, let's sit down and have a cup of coffee. Okay. And I said, then fine, let's sit down and have a cup of coffee. You know, it's not personal to me. I, I, I'm friends with guys I used to fight uh, with, you know, back, back in the days when you used to fight tournaments. And so there's nothing. There's, there, there's not personal to me at all. This would have been a great day, actually. I had one of my buddies said, you about I had a, about I had a good day. And I was like, man, it would have been a great day. It's, I'd be sore, but, you know, it had been fun. That's always the thing, guys. One of the reasons why you should train MMA, why you should train jujitsu, is because even if you lose a fight, you want to make sure the other guy will never want to fight you ever Absolutely. again because it's kind That's of right. a win-win at that point. But yeah. we need to move from an almost and By fight. the way, I'm not afraid of biting. I will bite. Biting? Uh, well, I'll, I'll I mean, bite hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, a fight, I'm going to bite. I'll, I'll, I'll do anything. I mean, I'm not above it. And I don't care where I bite, by the way. It just is going to be a bite. I'm not even going to ask any further questions on that. I think <laughs> that that basically speaks for itself. But we, we go from a potential fight in the Senate hearing, and now we need to go to kind of a pseudo fight that went, went on in the House. So the last time we had you on, we were talking about the fight for Speaker of the House. We yeah. were talking about uh, the, the whole situation. We thought Jim Jordan was going to be getting in that day, and within 48 hours, Jim Jordan's out. Steve Scalise was already out. And then kind of surprisingly and randomly and quickly, Mike Johnson from Louisiana got in there and people have their own opinions about him. A lot of people didn't even know the guy existed before this. So I guess just give me a read of the entire situation from soup to nuts, from, you know, the everything being blown up from the beginning to Mike Johnson, how you think he's going to do, what do you think that means for the U.S. House? Well, uh, first of all, the thing that happened with Kevin should never happen. First of all, of course I'll not. put that out there. Um, I, uh, I and I and if you and I believe that Mike is a very strong Christian guy. I really do. I mean, he was uh, I was his mentor when he came in. I'm not saying that's a good thing for him to brag about, especially mm -hmm. today. But I was his mentor, so he's my mentee, and he's from Shreveport, Louisiana. A great man of God. He is truly, truly a good guy. Um, nobody will say anything bad about him. I mean, they will now because instantly he was a bad guy when he became speaker, but he's a really solid, solid guy. I believe also that the Lord raises up leaders and um, it was just, it was his time. No one saw him coming. It just happened. And uh, it, it, and I was honestly surprised by it. I didn't see that happening. I, I was, I, I was like, Mike. And then when they announced Mike, I was like, I could see him winning this thing. Absolutely. Because it's very hard to do it. And timing, I said this before, timing and policy is two different things. The most important thing here is timing than it is over policy. And for him, it's Friday evening. Uh, he Everybody's tired. The, even the eight had started sliding back, saying that they, they regretted. Three of them had already said they regretted voting uh, to, uh, to vacate the chair with McCarthy. There was uh, a possible fourth that said that they would 
they would vote present and wouldn't vote against him if McCarthy ran. And so there's a good chance if Mike didn't win this, that McCarthy was going to get brought back up. And I wouldn't say good chance. It was going to happen. And so everybody got tired of fighting and they said, you know, Mike's a, Mike's a, a good guy. Um, let's give him a shot. It's interesting that today, uh, which I know this is going to be, you know, aired later, but today as we're speaking, the, uh, uh, they're going to vote on the exact same thing that Kevin McCarthy did, but they're going to do it two times. Instead of voting on one package, one CR with a clean CR, they're going to vote two CRs. So they're going to do one that goes into January and one that goes into February. And it's going to be the exact same bill, except broken into two, that they ousted McCarthy over. And I'm going to be curious of what these eight that were these social or f- fiscal conservatives so to say, uh, are going to do on this one. I bet they vote against it, but I bet they don't do a vacated chair over it. What, to be honest with you, I don't know that they will vote against it. And the reason why I say that oh, is because what was clear from the beginning is they didn't have a plan. They were what right. the Joker described in The Dark Knight, where it's a dog that once they catch the car, they don't know what to do with it. And so right. it's like they, they kind of had an axe to grind and they had the means to grind it. And then they basically put the house on halt so that they could have their right. little pissing contest. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how things go as we move on before the I, I will the be. Session. I, I, I'll be sure surprised that they vote for it. They're going to vote. They're going to let the Democrats carry it. And then you're going to have uh, some Republicans that vote with it. Uh, and it gives them an excuse to say no to it. But they're, I, bet, I bet anything they won't do a vacated chair, which if you're going to, you got to ask yourself, why did they do it on Kevin then? Right. Wouldn't if really it was really about it. physical conservatives uh, and, and uh, ideas, then why, then why didn't they do it with, with why aren't they going to do it this time? Which they won't. And, and Kevin didn't deserve to be vacated, and neither will Mike be, uh, will deserve to be vacated for this either, because it's the only option left to them. They didn't have any other option other than to shut down the government, and that's not a good thing for anybody. I certainly agree with that. So we will continue to pay attention to see what goes on over there um, as we move on. And again, we don't have time to, to really cover all of this. We got into a little bit of detail last time we talked, but obviously Israel's war against Hamas has been ramping up. Right. But in concert with that, the international outcry over the atrocities, supposed atrocities that Israel is perpetrating on the people of Palestine is going up. The demands for a ceasefire, the demands for Israel to not be so mean is part of the reason why I spent so much time letting my audience and some people around me know exactly in explicit detail what happened uh, on the October the 7th because it's like, look, you, someone can't come over to your house and do this to your wife and your kids and have some dude in a neighborhood across the street say, yeah, you really should just wait until the dust settles before you respond. But for you as a United States senator and as representative of the U.S. and of Oklahoma, what are your thoughts on Israel's war, how they're going about it, and whether or not we should be vying for some sort of a ceasefire? Absolutely no ceasefire. I won't support a ceasefire. Uh, Israel has to do what they're doing uh, because Hamas isn't going to go away unless they do. And keep, keep let your let your audience understand this too. Gaza is up by the Mediterranean Sea that's right beside Egypt, and that's what it borders Egypt. Now you have the West Bank that borders Jordan, the Dead Sea, and the Jordanian River, and it's on the other side of Israel. If you think of Israel, if you're not familiar with it, it's, it's kind of the shape of Florida as far as narrow, hmm. uh, but it, they're surrounded by bad actors around them, okay? And, uh, and and so Gaza was voted by the people that lived in Gaza to be governed by Hamas, Correct. a known terrorist organization. Now, anybody that lived in Gaza knew what Hamas was up to, and they could have left Hamas at any time. The border wasn't closed. They could they could have moved out of Gaza and moved into Israel if they chose to. They could have left any time they wanted to. It wasn't, it wasn't and I don't mean to, to, to grate this term, but to, to, to terms that have been used in the, new, in the news, Gaza wasn't a ghetto where they were forced to stay and they couldn't leave. Hmm. Uh, it was a place they chose, and as I said, they chose to live as, as Hamas and to govern them. That means that they had to support them in some degree. If there were Palestinians that didn't want to live there and they didn't want to live in Israel, they could have moved over to the West Bank where they were governed by the Palestinians, hmm. which they had their issues too, but there's two different things. And by the way, the West Bank is much, much bigger than Gaza. So they could have chose to move over there. They chose to. So now when people say that, oh, the humanitarian, that they should have ceasefire, it's a bad thing. War is ugly. What Hamas did was ugly. What's happening to the people, the innocent, the, what, those that are innocent there is ugly. But I'll go back to it. They chose to live there. 
and uh, and and underneath that rule, and they voted them in power. And now that regime, the terrorist organization Hamas, has to pay for the prices, and those that supported them going in are having to pay the price too. No different than when Germany in World War One or Germany underneath Hitler in World War Two. Uh, the German civilian population that put the put the Nazis in power had to pay for what they what the, the the regime that they chose to live underneath did. It sounds harsh to put it that way, but that's exactly the case. And again, the for cold, people, hard truth. right? For people that are saying Israel are genociding uh, the Palestinians, it's like the, the Hamas doesn't have an air force, but but Israel does. If they wanted to carpet bomb the entire area and kill millions of they people, could they could do yeah. it easily. And to say that they're colonizers, the entirety of the yeah. Middle East and Northern Africa are are Arab Muslim nations. Like, what are you talking well, about? Yeah, but let's just think about this. Um, they're not bombing the West Bank, so to say, and there's Palestinians that live there too. Right. But why isn't the Jordanians, why isn't the Egypt opening it up to the Palestinians? Well, because the Palestinians' behavior, you go back to Kuwait, when Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait, um, the Kuwaitis uh, um, uh, kicked out 300,000 Palestinians because they joined with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with um, um, Saddam Hussein at the time mm -hmm. to try to overthrow throw Kuwait. You go back to the Jordanians. When uh, the Jordanian then king was, was killed in the 60s, you had the Palestinians that rose up against the, the, the government and was joining the power that was overthrowing their own government. And the, and, and, uh, the Jordanians ended up having to kick them out. You saw what happened in Egypt during the coup and the Egyptians had to remove them from Egypt because they were part of the coup to overthrow the government. They have a history of doing this. And this is a reason why no one else has opened the border up to them. So what is it that's supposed to happen here? Uh, Israel is supposed to just live with it. Uh, no, they proved that they couldn't live with it. They tried it since 2014. They tolerated the harassment since 2014. They took it too far. And Israel has to eliminate them. It's the only option. And it, it is awful. But even the hospital, for instance, they're claiming that the hospital has to be protected. The reason why they're there is because Hamas is using them as shields. Right. And they're using it every opportunity they can use as shields. I guarantee you, once they secure the hospital, the Israelis will start running that hospital and taking care of those people better than Hamas was, I promise you. And they won't be used as human shields. But until Hamas leaves it, vacates it, and tells unequivocally they're not there and allow the Israelis to come in and search the place to show that they're not there, then Israelis, the IDF, which is, by the way, not an army, it's the Israeli Defense Force, the Israeli Defense Force defending itself, then they have every opportunity to do it, or they have every right to do what they're doing, and I support them, and that support will not change by me. I support them as well, and obviously you have to understand you're not just fighting a people group, not just a terrorist group. You're fighting an ideology, and when you see uh, mothers of slain Hamas fighters going out with tears of joy because their sons are martyrs in the fight against the, the Jewish devil, this something's tells you wrong right here. absolutely something's wrong right there. Now, I know you got a hard out, so I'm going to leave it there and let you go on about yeah. your business, but just guarantee me one thing, Mark Wayne. If you get a plus one for your fight against Sean O'Brien – at least consider me, okay? I got one cauliflower ear, not two, but hey, man, I got your back if you need it, okay? You're good. Yeah, I'll get you in. Yeah, right, but it man. won't happen, but I'll get you in. All right, man. We'll talk <laughs> All right, soon. See you. Bye. All right, bye. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. Wherever you're listening to this, please subscribe, rate, and leave us a positive five-star review. If you want me to come speak live at your event or on your podcast, just shoot me an email to info at undaunted.life. That's I-N-F-O at undaunted.life. Follow us on Instagram and like us on Facebook and check out our website for everything else, including how to donate to keep more content like this coming your way. Just go to www.undaunted.life. And also, we want to thank the band Holy Name for allowing us to use their music for our content. The music on this podcast is their song, Perfect. Perpetua, which is off their self-titled debut album on Face Down Records. The links are in the description. I'm your host, Kyle Thompson. Remember, keep pushing back darkness, keep forging spiritual, mental, and physical resilience, keep seeking the Lion of Judah. <laughs>